Hey everybody, welcome to episode 49 of the Fiberista Files. Today is Tuesday, September 27th. All right, um, this is episode 49, that means the next one's 50. I'm kind of excited about that. Um, in fact, to celebrate, I'm going to have a little contest. I'll tell you about that a little bit later, but um, stay tuned. I do have show notes tonight, so there's going to be less umming, hopefully. And uh, maybe this will go nice and quick and it will be a decent time. <laughs> Let's get started. Knitting. I've had both a successful and a complete fail at knitting this week. Um, successful because I... I had a breakthrough in my knitting, and that's rarer and rarer as I become a more experienced knitter. Uh, but it worked out this weekend for me, and I was super excited. Uh, I've been working on my, what I'm tentatively calling my trellis socks, which are these socks here, which are the um, socks that have this um, slip stitch cable that runs up. You can't really see it because I got it on the sock blocker, but runs up the top of the foot and then will go up the front and back of the cuff, you can see that I have turned my heel. I put this off for weeks and weeks and weeks because um, I use Wendy Johnson's Socks from the Toe Up book religiously. It is, in fact, the sock book that I use more than all other sock books. The, uh, than any book, really. This is the book that I use the most. Um, I love this book. And I do, I have used her magic, her explanation of Judy's magic cast on, which I love. Um, I love the explanation and the pictures are very clear for me, so I use that a lot. And I'm a process knitter, so I've been experimenting with different heels. Uh, I tried a short row heel this, not a short row heel, um, an afterthought heel this summer. I did the gusset heel for my husband's oven mitt socks. I've been experimenting with heels. And I also have this, which is like, um, the cheat sheet for gusset heels, this is a freebie on Wendy's website. It tells you based on how many stitches you cast on with, how many you increase to, how many stitches are on one needle, how many you increase to for the second needle um, for the gusset. Now, it goes from 68 to 72 stitches on this little chart. And I had 70 stitches on this foot of that, on this sock. And I know I could just d divide the difference and figure it out. But math and I don't get along so well. So I was really hemming and hawing about it because I did not want to deal with the math on creating either the regular heel flap sock, which again, you increase the gusset, then do the heel flap and the heel turn and all that, um, or the gusset heel, which starts really, like, I just didn't, I just didn't want to. And so I threw this in a bag and ignored it for several weeks. But I know that there are people that want to knit their patterns. So out of guilt, I took it back out. And I was looking through Wendy's um, heel directions because she has, in the beginning of this book, there's all these different techniques for um, heels and toes and all of that. So um, the short row heel is this one here and you can see I hope that it's a very simple heel this is the one that commercial socks usually have and as I started reading the directions I noticed it didn't say anything about increasing stitches on needle number two which meant that there's no gusset as soon as it clicked for me that there was no gusset on this heel I was all over that crap I was like show me show me what to do and it also doesn't have 70 stitches, but basically you knit until the next to the last stitch, wrap, turn, slip, whatever, and then come back. So it didn't matter how many stitches I had. I just knew I had to go to the next to the last one and then purl back and go to the next to the last one and then, and keep going that way. Um, that was fantastic. That was like a knitting breakthrough for me. I was thrilled. Now I had heard that people found that the short row heel doesn't fit for them. And I was a little nervous about that. Now, I have very pointy heels. I have, I have pointy bony feet, really. So in the directions, it says that the heel, this, this straight across piece here, should be about 14 stitches. I actually kept going until there were only 10 stitches. So I have kind of a funny looking heel to my foot. Like, 
it looks a little silly, but it fits like a freaking dream. Now, granted, I don't have a whole lot of sock left. Like here, I have all of the foot, but that thing slid over my heel so nice and settled into place like it was meant for my foot, which is how knitting socks should be. Shouldn't it be? Um, I have not ever experienced a very comfortable heel. Um, I usually have excess fabric back there because my heels are so thin. Um, uh, to say I am excited about this is a drastic understatement. Um, I started the, I don't know if you can even see this, I started the um, trellis pattern right here and right here, you can kind of see it. Um, and now it's going all the way across. So I won't be having like on the foot, when you get to these edge stitches over here, you have to start slipping stitches and stop slipping stitches because they've come to the edge. When you do the leg, you don't have to, they just keep rotating right around. It does mean that the edge stitch has to slip from one circular needle to the other, which is proving to be a bit of a challenge, but it's worth it. The thing that I really love about this pattern that I'm creating, let's toot my own horn some more, shall we? is that they're slipped stitches. This is not a combination of purl and knit. They're slipped, so everything is knit. There's no purl stitches, except when you do the heel, but that doesn't count. But if you wear this, like the raised stitches on the front might make you think that it would be uncomfortable to wear in your shoe. But the actual fabric, if you do look at the reverse stockinette, you can barely tell that there's any kind of um, patterning going on there at all. So it should feel smooth on your foot. I'm very happy about that. I'm very happy about this sock. I'm just very happy. I can't wait to get this out to test knitters. It's gonna still be a little while because I gotta do the cuff and I gotta figure out whether I want to rib or pico edge. I haven't done a pico edge. We'll see. Maybe I'll put in options in the pattern so you can decide what you want for a heel. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so that was the success. I also happened to be driving home to my house in Brownville on Friday and the yarn shop had a sign that said 20% off today only on all yarn. <sighs> I am a yarn dyer. I do not need to buy yarn. I can make anything that really realistically that I really need. Like I could make it. Didn't matter. I bought yarn. I bought this yarn. This is Joel Magic Degrade. Now I could be totally butchering that name, but as far as I can tell, that's how, that's what it is. This is a single ply of, um, I think it's an 80-20 blend of superwash, merino, and nylon. So soft and smushy. And I loved the ball and I loved the colors. Just loved it. So this weekend, while I was still avoiding the other sock, I cast on a new sock for me. Um, this is a simple three by one rib. The sock is knit on US two or 2.75 millimeter needles. Um, it is a singles yarn, so I do not predict that it will be very durable. This is a very lightweight sock. The whole thing is very light and fluffy and airy. It is very, um, compared to that one, which is much more dense, this is this feels very lofty and soft and, and light. So they will be lightweight house socks for me. Um, I will not be wearing them inside shoes, probably. Um, I think they'd be great sleepover socks. Like, if you're going somewhere and you know that people will be looking at your socks, this is a pair of socks to wear. Uh, and the back, of course, is plain stuck in it. I'm very happy with this sock. I'm going to be doing a short row heel on this sock because I love it. Uh, the needles that I'm using are needles that are new to me. I bet everybody in the world has knit with these needles but me. Let me show you. Um, this is another pair that I bought. <laughs> these are KA needles, um, high quality circular needles from Japan. Um, they The KA stands for Kinky Amabari Manufacturing Company. So the US2 that I'm using on the sock and I bought US4s um, as well. I like, I, I'm not usually a fan of bamboo needles. I'm like straight nickel plated sharp points all the way, but I, I needed a circuit. I wanted to do a magic loop sort of thing. I just wanted two needles. I did. When you do the two circs, I don't know if you can hear, but the needles, I'm sorry, that was probably really annoying on the screen. Let me do that over here. Can you hear them like 
clinking together. When I'm in the car with my husband, he doesn't like to listen to music. And the sound of the metals clinking together really starts to grate on my nerves. So I wanted something that wouldn't clink. And so not only did I go bamboo, but I went magic loop so that I only had one pair of needles to, to rub against each other. So I did that. But these needles not only spin on their cable like signatures do, but they're coated. It's almost like the bamboo was like polyurethane, unlike clover, which is more of a regular finish. Maybe it's sanded. These ones feel like they've been coated with poly. So they're smoother and slicker and the yarn um, slides much better than, than normally I, ha I find with bamboo. And the points are dull enough that they're not splitting the single ply. I'm able to get under there just perfectly and it doesn't split it or go through it, which I think the metal needles would. So all in all, this is the perfect combination of yarn plus needles plus very simple mindless pattern. I am in love. You can tell because I don't usually knit this much of a sock in a weekend. Usually it takes me weeks. So, success there. Complete fail. I, I haven't knit on the My Wish shawl since Fiber College, which was the first, the weekend after Labor Day, the second weekend of September, and that I only did one row. So My Wish has not made much ground at all. Um, no excuse. I just haven't pulled it. I, haven't, I want to be in the mood. I want that to be an intentional project. Um, I believe in intentional knitting. I believe that putting your in good intentions into a knit project creates a reality um, without being too woo-woo about it. Where this My Wish Shawl deals with the Make-A-Wish Foundation and it's sort of done to honor my friend Caitlin who is getting a wish soon. I want to be in the right mind frame when I work on that shawl and it life has been too crazy. I just cannot get the peace of mind and quiet of mind in order to be respectful of that. So my wish is sitting up on my shelves and it will stay there until I'm ready. Other complete fail. I don't know if I, I don't even know where it is to be completely honest. The Allen Dart frog prints or Prince Charming, whatever it is, frog pattern. It's getting, it's getting frogged. Uh, I do not like that pattern the way it is written. It will make a very cute frog. I do not want to dissuade anybody who likes frogs from knitting it, but it, the directions are knit flat and then you seam. You even seam the frog toes. That's just silly. I don't want to do all the extra work to convert it to in the round. I, I have to use double points and the double points I'm using are those Inox metal needles and the clinking again is bothering me. Um, no. I'm avoiding it and I've avoided, I've not knit anything for the baby that is coming in January since I started that frog pattern because I feel like I need to finish it before I can do something else. And I haven't knit anything for the baby at all. I've knit one, the Aviatrix baby hat, that's all I've knit. That's ridiculous. I need to get my butt in gear and get moving. So I'm going to frog the frog and I'm going to cast on a baby sweater out of sock yarn, um, superwash sock yarn, my sock yarn very soon. Um, I've got it narrowed down to a couple of choices. I have both a kimono sort of wrap um, pattern that I'm looking at and also I think it's, I can't remember if it's Morgan or Corgan. There's one that's beautiful. It's got little cable details on the top and then buttons down. Um, I've got, I've got, they're in my Ravelry queue. I haven't actually um, finished selecting one but maybe when I am ripping out the frog I will. Take care of that. That yarn that I was using for the frog is peacefully sporsted and it's a green and a yellow. One of them is Chiki Masala, I think, but um, don't quote me on that. I can repurpose that yarn for something better and something machine washable. So that's going away. So that's a fail. Um, that's, that's kind of sad. But I think it will, I think it will turn out better in the end. So. That's my knitting. Spinning. <laughs> my wheel's over there. Where I brought her in from the car when I moved down here. Drive bands off. Covered in dust. Haven't touched it. Haven't had time. Like, no time. I'm getting the trifecta yarn ready tonight and hopefully getting most of the packages ready tonight. Then I'm doing stuff for the shop update. 
by the end of this week, I hope to be able to recommit to spinning. I'm working on that beautiful Bartlett Yarns pencil roving that I'm really enjoying spinning. I want to get it done. I want to knit something out of it. So uh, hopefully next week I'll be able to make that a priority again um, because I do miss it. I also want to start the fiber sampler that I won from the Knitty blog contest. I want to start processing that, blogging about it, going through the process, and hopefully one sample a week. Um, processing, scouring, processing, which means combing or flicking or doing whatever, and then spinning. And then um, the knitting will maybe have to wait. I want to do like a sampler, maybe different squares, and somehow number them or something so that I can remember what was what, so that I can always go back to it, some sort of lap gan or something. Um, Maybe a, well, I was thinking modern log cabin, but I don't want it in garter. I want it in stock knit. So if you have any suggestions, um, I don't know what size to knit to make a square. And I, it's hand spun, so who knows if that would work anyway. Um, if you have any ideas of a non-garter stitch sampler, afghan, lapgan, suggest it to me. I would love to see what you have to say. Um, yeah, so that's that. Um, dye pods. There's not been any dyeing this week. Um, I am collecting still some custom orders and getting in contact with people who had questions about their orders and I will be getting on that Thursday. Thursday will be a dye day. I am going to have an update this week. The update is actually going to be all spindles. I have several people who are asking, do I still make the spindles? Do we have any spindles? And I've been holding off listing them because I was trying to save them for fiber college for my beginner spindling class. It's all done. It's all over. Uh, so they're all going up in the shop. I am going to be listing 17 spindles of mixed woods, mostly cherry and oak and beech. There's some maple in there, but not a lot. I have eight of the heavyweight beginner spindles, seven medium spindles, and two lightweight spindles. The update is going to be Wednesday night at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, like usual. Well, not Wednesday is not usual, but 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is usual. Um, yeah, so spindles are coming. Actually, yeah, they're coming. We'll figure it out. Um, I need to get some bubble wrap, but I can do that tomorrow. Uh, let's see. Dipods growth. Again, with the good and the bad. This last week's update was the best update I have ever had. Fan-freaking-tastic. Thank you guys so much for making that update um, so valuable for me. Um, it was really nice to see people plurking and posting on Ravelry about, yay, they got the Highland Handmaids that they wanted, and yay, they made their first purchase from Highland Handmaids. Like, that makes me feel amazing. And I didn't get into this business um, to get warm fuzzies, but it's totally a perk of the job. So thank you very much for making this such an amazing update for me. Um, I hope to be able to enable you more. Uh, I'm working on it. Uh, I did get an email last week, but I did not make it into the New England Textile Association's spa event in February. That was the one that I think last week I'd said, um, that I asked you to, to send good thoughts because I, um, really wanted to get in. I didn't. They sent me my rejection notice. They did say that I'm on the waiting list. So uh, I was pretty broken up about it. I was pretty sad and bummed. Um, then I talked to Josette from Enchanted All Farms, where I went to Common Ground Fair this weekend. I'll talk about that in a minute. But um, I talked to her about it, and she was like, don't be upset. That's silly. Do not be upset. I didn't make it in the first year I applied either. And to me, Josette is... Josette is in a whole other realm of awesome, and for for her to tell me that she didn't make it in her first year either was pretty big, and that made me feel so much better, because if Josette didn't make it in, then it's not me. Like, it's just the way they operate or, you know, whatever, um, but I was able to, to not take it personally after that, so... Uh, like I said, I am on the waiting list. I am going to be ready to go to that show. I am going to have inventory. I am going to be ready to go. Everything all set. I think towards the beginning of 
SPAV is in the third weekend in, in February. So I think at the beginning of January, I'm just going to email the people uh, who do the event and just say, hey, you know, I'm looking forward to attending SPA as a consumer. Um, I am on the waiting list. Just want to let you know that I'm going to be completely ready to go should you have any last minute cancellations. It's February and it's in Maine. The odds of a snowstorm are medium to good. Uh, last year there was 17 inches of snow on the ground during SPA. So although I don't want anybody to cancel and miss out on the show, I would really like to get in. So hopefully if I send that email, it will sort of keep me at the front of their mind. And so if they do have a cancellation, they'll be able to say, do you want it? And I'll be like, yep, I will be there in two hours. So I'm not holding my breath, but I'm not giving up either. Uh, processes. I thought I would talk a little bit this week about custom orders. I love custom orders. I love giving people exactly what they want. I love hearing them. Um, love what they, what they, you know, when they get exactly what they wanted. Um, my customers are fantastic about being very patient with me because sometimes it takes weeks or, or even more than a month before the yarn that they ordered is ready. Um, everybody is great about it. And I appreciate that so much. I love that you guys give me the chance to to get it right and not just hurry it through. I don't want to hurry it through. I want to do it right for you and I want you to be happy. Um, I do get requests from all over. I get emails to my Gmail account, highlyhandmaids at Gmail. I get Ravelry messages. I get private plurks. I even get comments on my blog. It's really difficult to keep track of all that and there's no way I would be able to do it if it wasn't for the lovely Evernote. Evernote.com is basically an online notepad where you can create what's called notebooks and you can create files for your notebooks and um, store information on the web so that you can access it from anywhere. I have an app for it on my phone. I have, you know, it's bookmarked here at the apartment. It's bookmarked at home on my home computer. Um, it's bookmarked at school on my school computer so that no matter where I am or what I do, if I get a custom order from someplace, I can immediately go to Evernote and say, I hope I have a file of custom orders that has their first and last name or as much of their name as I can get. Um, sometimes like with Ravelry, I don't get the whole name. Um, so I put their name and then in parentheses, I put where I'm getting them from. So if, if it's Ellison, it's two on Ravelry, then I put Ellison, it's two and then in parentheses, put Ravelry. Uh, or Gmail or Plurk or whatever. So their name, the name that I get from them, Gmail is great about giving me first and last name, real name. Um, Plurk and Rav, I, I get their usernames. I don't get their real names. So their name, their, where they're messaging me from, what they want, and then at the end, I either say needs to be dyed, um, invoiced, whatever. Um, when it's ready, I can go through my custom order list and say, okay, this lady wanted challenging and solar maple. So I'll go to wherever I got heard from her uh, or him, like on Ravelry, go through Ravelry, find the message, reply to them and say, look, it's ready. Send me your PayPal email address and I will send you the invoice. And I just invoice them directly via PayPal and they pay it and I ship it off. Um, Evernote has saved my bacon. It, it, it really does help me um, keep track of everything. There's no way I'd be able to do it otherwise. Uh, if you want a custom order and you're wondering what the best way is to get a hold of me, I would have to go Gmail. Like email highlandhandmaids at gmail.com or heather at highlandhandmaids.com. Either one, they go to the same place. Um, that's the easiest way for me to organize it. Ravelry and Plurk work. Ravelry works better than Plurk. Um, unless you're a super close friend of mine whose privates I check. <laughs> that sounded bad. Whose private plurks I check on a regular basis. Um, I don't want to miss it. And if you don't hear from me in a couple of weeks, message me again. Hey, did you get that order that I asked for? How's that coming? Um, polite emails will always be responded to as speedily as I can. And keeping me on track by gentle reminders is a great thing. So that's processes. Grabby hands. I don't have the grabby hands to show you this week, unfortunately. I hope to be able to show you next week. I have a dear friend on Plurk and Ravelry and Google Plus. She's all over, just like me. Uh, her name is Cassie, and Cassie 
has unfortunately um, there have been some medical issues in her family and she is she is her her tragedy is our benefit sorry to capitalize off of her her tragedy but uh Cassie makes hand bound books paper books like notebooks and she's phenomenal I bought a little book that was made out of a hot cocoa box the other day paid five bucks for it and I'm happy with it but Cassie's like here's the hot cocoa cup book here's Cassie like way up Cassie has beautiful um, hard covers that are um, decorated she has these beautiful braided um, book binding it's just gorgeous all of her papers inside are beautiful and well cut and Cassie's books are amazing if you haven't purchased a hand bound journal you really should they are more expensive than the ones that you get at Walmart the yarn that I sell is more expensive than the yarn that you get at Walmart the difference is the same to have something that has been handcrafted for you just elevates whatever you're putting in it grocery lists to-do lists rants um, you know observations letters anything that you write in there is just better because it's in a hand down book totally 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 worth every penny you spend and Cassie because she's trying to um, quickly make some money to deal with these medical bills that she's dealing with unfortunately um, she's running a coupon code on her Etsy shop right now so I want you to pop open a new window while you're listening to this and I want you to go to www.thecraftykitten t-h-e-c-r-a-f-t-y-k-i-t-t-e-n dot etsy dot com and I want you to buy a book from Cassie's shop they are beautiful now there's a discount code if you go to when you start to check out with PayPal or check out with however you check out with I believe you have to use PayPal on Etsy but I don't know that for sure there's a place for you it's a very small little line that says enter coupon code click that and all one word no spaces type in friend of the kitty friend of the kitty all one word into the coupon code you're gonna save 25% off the top of the book BAM done Trust me on this, you will not be sorry. I cannot wait to get my new book, and I will show you all next week. Um, I don't know what I'm going to put in that book. I have a hard time thinking that my writing is good enough, which is ridiculous. I went through the main writing project. Like, I'm a writer. I'm going to force myself to write something in it every day, I think. Some observations, some, um, I don't know, three good things that happened. I, I might put it by my bed. Um, down here in the apartment and maybe write notes to my husband since we're apart during the week I don't know but it's gonna be good and it's gonna be amazing and it's gonna be 10,000 times better because it's in one of Cassie's journals so that's my grabby hands this week I really hope you um, honor yourself enough to go get one of these books so um, oh that was numb there are probably a lot of those. I hope that you don't notice them. I hope that they don't bother you. I don't notice them. I have no idea I'm doing it until I do it. Um, oh, there's another one. That is all. Oh, no, I told you I was. Oh, I told you I was going to talk about the Common Ground Fair, and I told you I was going to talk about the contest. We are not done here. I have two things. Let me go grab what I bought at the Common Ground Fair, and I'll be right back. Okay, two of the things that I bought at the Common Ground Fair, I can't even show you. But I'll tell you about them. So, the Common Ground Fair is put on by every year um, in the third week in September by the Maine Organic Farmers and Gardeners Association, MOFCA. Um, MOFCA has a bit of a mixed reputation here in Maine. Um, MOFCA is doing some good things. MOFCA goes doesn't always go about it the best way, but anyway. MOFCA, one of the major things that they do every year is put on the Common Ground Fair. Common Ground Fair is upwards of 250 vendors. It's a huge fair by Maine standards. And it's supposed to be that all the vendors have at least 75% of the product in their booths from Maine farms. So either it's their farms or they're selling things that um, are purchased from farms. 
it's goodness. It's yummy, main, natural goodness. This is one of the places that showcases all of the awesome sauce that Maine has to offer. Um, honey, natural grown honey and beeswax products, um, fiber, yarn, uh, toys, kids' toys, um, woodworkers galore, jewelry, like so much stuff that is from Maine companies and it's awesome. I love to go. I don't buy a whole lot. Um, I just don't. I, I like to go to look. That's kind of why I go. It tends to get a lot of people there and once the crowds show up, I'm ready to go. Mofka's Common Ground Fair has an average of 60,000 visitors a weekend. It's in Unity, Maine. Have you ever heard of Unity, Maine? No, you haven't because Unity, Maine's in the middle of freaking nowhere. I say that by main standards, so you know it's bad. Um, it's it's there's nothing there. There's nothing else there. There's you go to go to the fair. You don't go there on your way to go somewhere else. Um, but it's huge. So my husband and I went Saturday morning. Uh, we left early. We had hoped to get there at nine, but we stopped for breakfast and a couple other stuff. So we got there around ten o'clock, and it had rained all morning, so it was dead when we got there. It was awesome, so good. You could actually walk around without these, you know, crunchy organic. Um, not that they all are, but the people who go to this fair are like the dreadlocks and they're walking around in bare feet, like soaking through mud and ground. They do not wear deodorant, a lot of them. Like, <laughs> we got out of there before it got real bad. Um, there are several really lovely people at the Common Ground Fair and there are some people who go, where did they go all year long? Because you never see them all year. And then they show up at the Common Ground in like mass quantities. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of judgmental tonight, sorry. So, um, we go, I saw Enchanted Knoll Farms. I went to the fleece tent. I bought two beautiful fleeces. I can't show them to you because two stalls down from the fleece tent was my fiber processor, fiber, uh, Oasis fiber mill. And she looked at those bags. She's like, I'll take those home with me. I'll get them processed. I was like, thank you, Diane. Thank you very much. Did not have to carry the fleece home with me. Did not have to sit that, like have them sit here in my apartment, stinking up their wooliness. And like, I just, just handed them off to her. She wrote my name on the back of the text. She said, I'll give them to you as soon as I can, which realistically will probably be December because she's so busy, but that's okay. I'm not in any rush. I got a baby doll South Down fleece and I think was a Romney cross fleece. I don't honestly remember. It was pretty and it was gray and I bought it. Um, the fleece tent was the first time I've seen California variegated um, mutant fleece. I didn't like it. It was probably just the specific fleece that was there, but there were a lot of second cuts and the tips were breaking off in my hand. It was a very brittle fleece. So I was like, wanted I wanted to get a new fleece type that I hadn't worked with before, process spinner as much as a process knitter, but I just couldn't justify that kind of money. Um, so I didn't. So I bought two fleece, then I dropped them off, talked to Josette, walked around, saw some other vendors, Went to Bartlett Yarns because clearly I cannot get enough Bartlett Yarns. The hat that I knit that I am just waiting for, stretch, that I am waiting just for pictures in order to send out to test centers. I just, this hat's done. It's the hat that has the lining in it um, that I showed you several episodes ago that I still need to photograph. I might take this to school with me tomorrow and stick it on a kid's head and take his picture. We'll see. Um, I knit this hat out of Bartlett Yarns in the Midnight Heather and the Medium Sheep's Wool Gray. I have plenty of the Sheep's Wool Gray, but I'm almost out of the blue. So I bought more blue. Um, this hat fits me. doesn't really fit my husband. I'm convinced that if I block this hard enough, it will. But I don't really want to. I kind of like it the way it is, and I kind of want it. So I'm going to keep it, and I'm going to knit the larger size that I wrote the directions for but haven't actually knit. Uh, same thing with the blue and the gray. Um, for my husband. We won't wear them at the same time. Promise. I'm not that person as much as I love my husband. They also, when I went to the open house, they were processing a wool alpaca blend and that was the fiber that they let me jump in, literally jump in and fall into. Uh, and so I was able to see the finished yarn from that. And Leslie remembered us, the owner, and we talked. It was a good time. But they also had taken some of the undyed, like the lighter gray alpaca and white sheep's wool and they hand dyed some which was not it's not how they usually dye they usually send their wool out it gets dyed it comes back it gets blended in and spun but this they hand dyed this is a lovely little alpaca wool beauty that is mine i think you can see pretty clearly in there in the picture 
that this is a very pale lavender, lilac -y purple, excuse me, with the gray showing through. It's this beautiful heathered purple. I love this. It is softer than regular Bartley yarns. Um, this is a utilitarian wool. It's not the softest wool you're going to find, but it is the alpaca makes this much softer and there's a really nice halo. Don't know what this is going to be yet, but it's going to be for me. I think it would look nice with my charcoal pea coat as like a cowl maybe that sticks out the top, something that stands up like a cabled cowl or something like that. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, the only other thing I bought was from my cousins. My cousins own Tide Mill Organic Farm, TideMillOrganicFarm.com. They have a, what is the word I'm looking for? Diversified organic um, business. They have organic milk, organic chicken, cow, beef, um, turkey, pork. They have organic vegetables. They... They have all sorts of organic everything, and um, they sell their products at the fairs. One of the reasons I love Common Ground, you can get pretty alpaca wool and meat. Like, in what other world can you get wool and meat, and they live happily together? Nowhere else. I love it. So anyway, I bought a pound of bacon and a pound of breakfast sausage from them. Oh. Thick slab bacon, totally unfooled around with no no chemicals, just the most deliciousness you'll ever find. And the breakfast sausage oh, slays me. I, it will let. I have to divide up the package into like a hundred little packets because I can't eat it fast enough before it goes bad because I don't eat a lot of sausage. But um, worth it, totally worth it. It's amazing. Um, I also tried their organic chocolate milk, which is raw milk unpasteurized, unhomogenized, 100% whole milk with organic sugar cane powder and organic cocoa. That's it. You shake up the bottle and you drink it. Now I'm, I thought that I was lactose intolerant. I'm beginning to think that it's not lactose, that it's a gluten allergy because usually when I eat cheese, I also eat bread. So maybe that's what's going on because I was able to drink that milk with no problems. It might've been that it wasn't pasteurized or homogenized. I don't know. I don't really know, but it was yummy deliciousness, and it has been years since I've had, like, a glass of milk. So it was a, a total win. Got to see my cousins, got to see their new baby, Ruth. Um, I don't call her baby Ruth. She's a new baby, comma, and her name is Ruth. Uh, super happy baby. I just love her. Actually, I, you all don't want to see the picture. I'm not going to show you the picture. Sorry. Um, what is it with babies that people want to show pictures all the time? I don't know. Anyway. Um... So that's what I got at the Common Ground Fair. It wasn't a whole lot, but I had a really good time walking around. And as soon as the crowd showed up, we were out of there. It was awesome. And I happened to get out of there before my mom showed up. <laughs> so I didn't have to see her either. That was excellent. Okay. Um, contest. As you know, next episode will be 50 episodes. Yay! You would think I've been doing this a year and a half. I'd have more episodes than that. But no. I'm a slacker who doesn't podcast every week. I'm okay with that. Life happens. But in order to celebrate my 50th episode, I'm going to do two giveaways. Now, this is not giving you a lot of time because hopefully it will be about a week. I think you can do it. There are two ways to win in this contest, and there are two, there are two prizes. The first way to win is to enter an in-progress or a finished object into the Highland Handmade Ravelry group, the um, show-and-tell thread. What's it called? Um, I think it's called the show-and-tell or show-off your FO or something like that. Anyways, it's the sticky thread um, that's all about showing off your FOs. It doesn't have to be an FO. Show an in-progress shot. This thread has been woefully underproductive in this group considering the amount of yarn that I've sent out and fiber that I've sent out. Now, if you buy fiber and you spin it up, that works. If you want to show me an in-progress shot of your singles on your spindle or your wheel, perfect. If you show me finished yarn, perfect. If you show me your finished yarn knit up, even better. I use these pictures when I'm at shows and somebody asks me, how does this knit up? I can go to the FO thread or I can go to people's projects page and I can click on them and say, this is how this yarn knits up. Or this is how this fiber, this is one way the fiber can look spun up. Um, 
that's a very useful tool for me. So it's it's kind of self-serving that I'm doing this, but I want to see what y'all are knitting. I want to see what you are spinning. Obviously, I sent it to you. I know what you have. I want to see what you create with, um, with it. So if you put a picture in the show off FO thread, you get an entry. Yay. Is I'm going to just, what I will do is I will use my, at the top of the, th I'm sorry, I keep interrupting myself. That's annoying. At the top of the thread, it shows how many images there are. So I'm going to click on how many images there are and I'm going to random number generate. And whatever image number that is, that's the person who will win. Um, it does have to be a Highland Handmaid's yarn or fiber. So like there's been a couple people who've shown me, um, like one lady had did a dye experiment and she showed me the yarn that she dyed um, with, I think it was Kool-Aid. And that's awesome and I'm totally happy to see that, but it's not eligible for the drawing because it's not Highland Handmaid's. That's fine. I totally want you to keep it there. Keep showing me the stuff that you're doing. If I inspire you to dye, I want to know about it and I want pictures. Um, but as far as winning the contest, it has to be Highland Handmaid's yarn or fiber. What do you win, you ask? I'm not an awesome podcaster who has Volumiza, and if I did, I wouldn't be giving it away. So sorry, it's not Volumiza. However, the winner will receive a $25 gift certificate to my shop. No strings attached. You tell me what you want, and I will deduct it from your $25. I will affix, basically, you'll have to tell me, and I'll change the pricing on stuff so that you can get it, because I don't have an actual physical dollar off coupon code. I only have the percentage off. So you're going to get $25 worth of credit in my store. Tell me what you want, and we'll get it to you. Includes shipping, includes anything you want. Yay, $25. That's a skinny yarn, plus a little something extra. Yep. So that's the first contest. The second contest, you will win. This is a book that a friend of mine purchased two. So she didn't need both of them, obviously. So she's asked me if I wanted to give one copy away. So if you win, I will actually ask for your address and I will send her your address so that she can ship it out to you directly. It's a book called The Essential, The Entrelac. Nope. Entrelac. The Essential Guide to Interlaced Knitting by Rosemary Drysdale. It's a beautiful hardcover book all about entrelac knitting. Um, Entrelac, entrelac knitting is kind of fun actually because you feel very productive because you're getting all these little squares done. Um, I'm knitting a Noro Entrelac scarf that I, it's been in hibernation for a couple of years. Um, it's on a US one and I hate the needle. It's a crappy needle. So I haven't picked it up. I have a Knit Picks options US one now. I just haven't switched the needle over. So you need to get back on that, but it's not high on the priority list. So anyway, Entrelac, the essential guide to interlaced knitting by Rosemary Drysdale is prize number two. I'm going to start a thread in the Highland Handmaids group. You do have to be a member of the group to win a contest, I'm just saying. Um, in that thread, we'll say, um, I want to know, oh, sorry, husband texted me. I want to know what your favorite episode's been. Um, it could be one of the bonus episodes, one of the ones I've done with Katie. It could be one of the early ones. Um, if you don't remember the number, just say, I like that episode where you, you know, the cat jumped up on your face or whatever. Uh, tell me what your favorite episode was. I want to know. I'm curious. I've put out 49 episodes once this one posts. And it's very easy to watch podcasts. It's not as easy to give feedback on them, especially positive feedback. If everything's going great, you don't hear a lot. When something's going wrong, sure enough, there's some idiot who, there's somebody who's going to make a snarky comment. So, um, I don't hear, no news is good news, I guess. I don't hear a lot of bad, um, so, and I don't hear a lot of good, so I imagine that you guys don't have a problem, but I want to know, what did you like? What was your favorite episode? So, um, the thread will be, uh, something like what's your favorite or who's your favorite or whatever, which one's the best, something to that effect. And, um, on episode 50, I will on air draw the winners for both the FO contest and the, um, book contest, the uh, Essential Guide to Interlace Knitting Contest. So uh, I should have mentioned in the earlier one, you get an entry for every picture that you submit. So if you have six projects in Highland Handmaids, you should post all six projects in separate pictures. Not one picture, that only gets you an entry. Post them all in different entries. Okay, now that I'm at 45 minutes, I think I am finally done. So until next week, guys, happy spinning and knitting, and thanks for tuning in.